Right, Tom, you just observed uh, number 41 uh, batting in cricket. Um, from your observation, what I want you to do, I want you to identify strengths and weaknesses of his performance, uh, covering the areas of skills, tactics, fitness, and overall success. Um, after you've done that, if you want to look at an action plan um, to improve his major weakness and justify why it is his major weakness, uh, to include coaching points, progressive practices, time scale, and how you'd measure any improvements uh, in his performance. Um, throughout this assessment, uh, if you could apply, you know, knowledge from um, the AS specification from the areas of physiology, psychology, uh, and socio-cultural areas. Is that okay? Right, off you go. So, um, the performer number 41, in terms of uh, skills, he, his strengths were the cut. Um, th this was a strength because he scored many runs from this um, and was able to manoeuvre the field. Uh, it was it was also good because uh, it was stable while he did it. He had two points of contact on the floor at all times with a low centre of mass. The, the sweep was also effective for him as it um, allowed him to pick up singles um, and he kept hit, kept hitting the gaps with this. Um, his forward defence was also good. Um, he didn't get out um, bold so um, he protected his wickets well when there was good ball um, and he identified the good ball well showing that he was a, a grieved SR bond. Um, his running between his uh, technique for running between the wickets was also uh, good because um, he had his bat in the other hand so um, friction and air resistance wouldn't slow him down um, and he made all of his singles. Uh, in terms of tactics, his communication was good because when he um, didn't think there was a, a run there he had a clear call of no and likewise for when when he did fall there was a running clear call of yes. Um, this could show that he's a um, extroverted character because um, uh, um, he had a, um, he could he seeked um, high arousal. Um, throughout, um, he identified the uh, the field well uh, as he hit gaps uh, many a time, scoring runs from it. Again, this shows that um, for some of it, for most of his shots, he was in the autonomous phase of learning, um, and he could think about strategies to get uh, to for where to hit the ball. His spatial awareness was also good as he um, didn't hit his wickets. And he kept hitting the field, and he kept hitting the gaps, also showing that it was a, a grooved skill. Um, his uh, shot selection was good. This could have been him due to um, he um, played full balls on the front foot and the shorter ones on the back foot. This could be because of uh, Bandura's observational theory of learning, where um, he. Yeah. Um, in terms of fitness, his speed was good because he made all of his um, he made all of his runs when running between the wickets. Uh, this could be due to him being a fast glycolytic um, athlete, so he has low um, mitochondria, but can uh, anaerobic could perform well. His acceleration was good as well. He uh, got into his uh, speed quickly. Uh, acceleration is Newton's second law stating that the greater the force applied the greater it, uh, the more the acceleration. Um, his coordination was good because um, he kept hitting the ball and didn't miss any shots that he tried to play um, and middled mo most of them uh, again showing that he was in the autonomous phase. Um, he showed agility as well from against a spinner. He wanted to come forward and then realised he quickly needed to go back and play a sweep shot. 
uh, disequilibrium due to uh, Newton's third law of reaction, where for every reaction there's an equal and opposite. Uh, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. Mm. So he uh, quickly um, moved into the other position. Um, his reaction time was good because um, it, he reacted to all the speeds of bowling. This could probably be because he's got lots of motor units, meaning that he could um, reach the threshold quicker and the all of no, all or non law occurred quicker. Um, his balance was good because um, he didn't lift his back foot for work from when the keeper was stood up to the wickets. Uh, again, this is due to him having two points of contact and a low centre of mass. Uh, in terms of weaknesses for the skills, um, I thought his on drive was weak. Uh, this eventually got him out in the last ball of the innings um, and he didn't pick up any runs from it. The back foot drive as well, um, he couldn't time it. Uh, this is probably due to him being in the autonomous, uh, the associative for cognitive phases of learning for this shot. Um, and again, the cover drive, uh, he didn't score any runs from it. Uh, in terms of tactic weaknesses, uh, I thought he lacked a surgeon because he uh, um, had no forceful behaviour within the laws of the game, uh, putting the, the opposition onto the back foot. Um, when the umpire signalled that he was a power player, um, I thought that he didn't adapt his style. I thought he was quite one dimensional, so he couldn't. He didn't have the ability to hit the big shot and hit over the top to get boundaries. Um, and overall, for his running, I thought his decision making was quite poor. Um, he was turning down ones, um, and eventually ran one of his teammates out as well due to a poor decision. Um, in terms of fitness, um, I thought his power was quite poor because he didn't hit any boundaries. This could be due to a lack of explosive strength um, in the deltoid uh, and, trape and um, tricep brachii, uh, so therefore the ball wasn't go as far. Also, again, his muscular strength of the deltoid and tricep brachii um, enabled him not to hit any boundaries and he couldn't hit over the top. Um, due to him turning down uh, singles, his aerobic capacity might have been poor and he might have been tiring. Uh, we could also see for his aerobic capacity that his, um, sterno, uh, his thoracic cavity was increasing. Uh, meaning that pressure lowered and more air could get in. Um, and overall his cardiovascular fitness I thought was poor because again he was turning down singles so he may have been tired. Um, cad and wasn't resistant to fatigue. This could be due to um, the chemo receptors uh, not picking, not detecting up the lack of uh, oxygen in the bloodstream quick enough which sent a message to the uh, base or motor control centre um, in the medulla oblongata um, which then will cause uh, vasoconstriction of the precapillary sphincters and the arterioles to the organs and uh, vasodilation to the muscles. Overall, the performer was effective as he's picked up runs throughout. Um, however, this could have been increased uh, to maximise even more runs. But he only lost his wicket on the last ball, trying to go for sort of big runs. Um, I'm going to prioritise the on drive as his major weakness. Uh, this is because. It eventually got him out and he didn't score many runs from it. Uh, the uh, training programme is going to uh, follow a, a four week programme with two sessions a week that are 40 minutes long. Uh, due to it being 40 minute, uh, four weeks long, um, he 
it is a meso cycle uh, and the program will follow the principles of training it will follow moderation as there is only two sessions a week uh, re reversibility will be prevented as um, training is regular uh, it's specific as it will set a smart target with this coach at the start to improve his on drive um, variation will occur because practice um, the practice types used will be um, change so use varied practice as the situation and the environment will be um, changed and you'll also use mass practice um, overload will occur as the speed of the bowling um, will be increased progressively throughout we'll be able to see that progression has occurred due to a pre and post test where we will uh, put a coned um, space of around uh, eight yards um, on the line of mid wicket and uh, mid on uh, emulating a gap in the field we will use um, in this test we'll use the mechanical guidance of a bowling machine set at 55 miles an hour on a good length on the line of middle stump uh, no, uh, middle and leg stump uh, a bowling machine is a form of technology to enhance performance and we will record how many uh, he can hit out of 10 through the area at the start and we will also do this test at the end where hopefully he can get 9 out of 10 at least. Um, in terms of the coaching points for the um, on drive, so for the grip, um, both hands should grip around the handle towards the top of it. Um, the thumb and forefinger should make a V, um, which will point down the line of the outside edge and the splice of the bat. Um, for the stance, his, um, his, his feet should be shoulder width apart, the knee should be slightly flexed. The knee is a, um, a hinge joint with articulating bones of the femur, the tibia and the fibula and uh, flexion at the knee is caused with the agonist being the bicep femoris, the semitendinosus and the semimembranosus and the antagonist being the um, vastus medialis, vastus intermedialis, vastus lateralis and the rectus femoris. Um, the way it should be evenly distributed across the balls of the feet and um, the head and eyes should be square and level facing down the wicket towards the bowler. Um, for the back lift, um, the, shoulder, the front shoulder and elbow should be pointing towards the bowler. Uh, the bat should be lifted up and moved back, causing the uh, front forearm to be almost parallel with the floor. And then for the actual shot, um, the the performer should lead with the head, uh, and this would uh, this should onto the line of the ball. Uh, this will allow the uh, hit the front hit to abduct towards the line of the ball. The hip is a bone and socket joint with articulating bones of the pelvic girdle and the femur. Um, abduction of the hip is caused by. Uh, the agonist being the gluteus maximus and the gluteus medius and the antagonist being the adductus longus, the adductus brevis and the adductus magnus. Um, the front knee should then eccentrically contract into flexion, eccentric contraction of the bicep femoris, the semitendinosus and the semimembranosus. Um, this will cause the front ankle, the ankle is a Hinge joint. We'll leave the ankle. You don't, your movement analysis is really right, good here, yeah, so you can leave that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then on the uh, line of the ball, the arm should begin to adduct through and uh, into the. And you can open the face or close the face to um, change the line of the ball if necessary. Um, and then, um, and also you can. 
snap the wrists at the end if um, extra power is needed. Um, for in terms of the progressive practices, we'll start off with the pre-test, as we said before, and in, then, then in the first session, we want to take the performer back to the cognitive phase of learning. So we'll do this by showing him a video of a elite performer. The video will be a type of visual guidance. This guidance should be used alongside verbal guidance from a coach who will cue the main points needed. And then, um, so in the, and then in the first session, we'll use the mechanical guidance of a map and the player should uh, practice the transition phase between <coughs> the stance and the final position. Um, once he becomes confident and competent um, at this, um, he can move on to the next session. However, in this session, we should keep arousal levels low as um, the SR bond will be uh, exaggerated with high arousal due to the drive state. Um, in the second session, um, a peer should be introduced and um, should use a drop feed uh, on a good length on the middle stump. From here, he should practice hitting the ball and then once competent, the target area of eight yards on the line of mid wicket and mid on should be introduced and he needs to get um, eight out of ten before he can move on to the next session. Uh, in the third session, uh, an underarm feed from a bowler's line should be used from a peer. Again, once competent and confident at this shot, the target area should be reintroduced and once getting eight out of ten, he can move on to the next session. Um, in the uh, fourth session, um, an overarm feed from the peer should be used. Uh, this will increase the speed of the ball in allowing for overload. Um, uh, again, once he's pre also a natural uh, variation in the line of this of the, the ball uh, will occur, so he'll be able to identify which balls to play and not to play. And then again, um, he, sh he should um, get at least eight out of ten through the area before new moving on to the next session. Um, then the um, fourth session, fifth session. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> um, he, a bowling machine should be used to set up at uh, fifty-five miles an hour. Again, once he's competent at this, the pace of the bowling machine can be slowly increased to around seventy miles an hour. The uh, area can be introduced again and aiming to get out of 10 before he can move on to the next session. The performer should then be put into a net against um, teammates who are varying the lines and lengths of the ball in so again he can see which balls to play and not to play and um, for the um, for the test to move on to the next session out of the 10 shots he tries to uh, play the on drive two should get at least eight through the area. Um, in the next session, he should be put into a condition game such as a indoor match. Um, here he'll be able to see which balls to play to or not to, and we'll be able to see if his performance is successful. If it is successful, we can introduce that into the game. Um, and it should be successful. Uh, and then we'll finish off with the post test uh, so it's evident that progressions occurred. Next up.